Hi, today we're at Junction 9 on the M5 motorway, Tewkesbury, and I'm here because there's a starling roost here, and it's quite spectacular as starling roosts tend to be. So I was here a couple of evenings ago and I filmed some of it, but I've come back tonight, there's a bit more of a glow in the sky, not that I'm sure that's going to make much difference, but I really enjoyed filming them the other day, I just took video, I didn't at any point see a stills picture, it just didn't really exist. I tend to think the better roosts for stills pictures are some of our peers, like Brighton Pier and Aberwithwith, but here inland it's more difficult to find a, a clear aspect. But anyway, I enjoyed filming it, so I've come back tonight and I know that when they finally roosted, it was just over there in an industrial estate. So I'm hoping tonight I'm going to get a bit closer. I'm going to start off in this car park and then after about 10 minutes or so, going to move over there. Now it didn't start until 5.30 the other night and it's now it's now five past five and it was all over by 10 to 6 as well. They'd all settled down to roost. I've walked around the industrial estate trying to pinpoint where they actually roosted by the amount of droppings on the floor and I can see droppings but I can't see the quantity that I expected and mostly the droppings are on the car roofs but you'd expect the car roofs to be white and they're not so maybe they roost in a different place every night I don't know. You don't get to watch a starling murmuration by yourself. These are wonderful spectacles and some of these roosts attract people in their hundreds. At first it's not particularly dramatic, just scattered birds, but the numbers start to build up. Small flocks come in and join other flocks and get larger and larger. Here's a new flock arriving. At first I thought these street lights were going to be a problem in getting the way. But as they started to glow, I started to think they were going to be interesting. I was looking forward to the starlings going past the streetlights. I also decided that when I got a picture like this where it was just against the sky, it wasn't so interesting. It was better to have it against the buildings or the streetlights or the hillside in the other direction. It gave it a sense of scale. Initially, I also thought I would be filming in slow motion, but as I watched it, I thought, no, this is not appropriate for slow motion. In fact, it might be better with time lapse, i.e. speed it up. Finally, I decided not to do either, and all of the footage of these starlings in flight is at normal speed. It wasn't always easy to know which way to pan the camera. Should I be panning left here or panning right? But as the numbers built up, we started to get those really interesting shapes. That's the sort of effect you're looking for. But unfortunately, it doesn't last very long. How many starlings were in this roost, I don't know. I didn't attempt to count them, I was concentrating on filming. But some of these roosts can have a hundred thousand birds in them and they attract huge numbers of people. Hundreds of people go to see the well-known and popular roosts. They say that starlings do this because it confuses predators. Any peregrines or sparrowhawks will be confused by this mass of numbers. I'm not too sure about that because it always attracts predators. I did see peregrines while I was there and surely it's drawing predators in towards them. Now this is worth watching. Look at the birds at the bottom of the flock. It's as if they're being sucked down towards the floor. It actually reminds me of water going down a plug hole. They're being sucked down. They're going to roost. They're landing in the trees underneath them. And you have a sky full of starlings and one minute later not a starling to be seen. They all go down into the roost very, very quickly. On the second evening, after 10 minutes of filming, I decide to go across to the industrial estate and see if I can get closer. I should have walked. It was very close, but I chose to take the car. 
I'm on the industrial estate now. I made a mistake. I chose to come by car, forgetting that it's the rush hour, 5.30 to 6 o'clock-ish, and it's not very far, but there's a dual carriageway I've got to go across, and you can't actually cross it. You've got to go along it, around an island, and back up the other side of the dual carriageway, and that involves about six sets of traffic lights. I might be exaggerating slightly, but it took me too long to get here. So I just got to the trees, and I didn't know where the trees were, where they were roosting, just as they were settling down. I got a little bit of footage of that, but then afterwards I went round the side of the building and there's an open aspect to it, and I could have seen the trees perfectly clearly, and there were five people standing there, so that's obviously the spot to be. So I guess I have to come back for a third night now. All of this video footage is taken with the Lumix GH6, which I prefer to use for video work, and tonight I'm going to use the 40 to 150 2.8 lens because I'm going to be very close. I'm back now, this is the third night, and when I got here I can now see the, the droppings on the floor and on the car bonnets. I'm a little bit early at the moment, but they're just starting to arrive. And the Starling fan club is in place as well. But I very quickly forgot about the 40 to 150 mil lens, they are far too close. This is mostly up and under now, they're directly on top of me, and I'm using a 12 millimetre lens on the Micro Four Third camera. The birds are very close, and as well as needing a camera, you also need an umbrella. The rushing sound you can hear is the wing beats of the starlings. People using mobile phones are probably getting excellent footage. Mobile phones are great in dull light. But you can see here the buildings are getting in the way and even the trees they're going to roost in are in the way. And it was all over very quickly on this evening. Spectacular looking flock but you can hardly see them because of the trees and then you realise they've actually roosted already, they've gone down. Another smaller flock came in, and more in the trees around, and it was all over. That was a, a little disappointing tonight, when they became a thick mass of birds, and the shape was changing, they went down very low behind the trees, and you didn't really see it all that well. Perhaps I need to come a fourth time. I did go back for a fourth visit, but each time I went, the number of starlings coming in seemed to get less. It was getting towards the end of February, and the murmurations start to fade and become less dramatic. Thanks for watching.